So we just went through and talked about how to uh, solve absolute value inequality or equations. Today we're going to talk about how to solve absolute value inequalities. So it's just a quick review on absolute value, right? If I say the absolute value of 4, I'm saying how far is 4 away from 0. What we're going to look at next, though, is what if I say the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 4? So remember what that means. That means the distance away from 0 has to be less than or equal to 4. So if you think of a number line here, there's 0. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Well, if I go to these two points, if I measure the distance, any of these numbers in here, 3, 2, 1, they are all less than 4 units away from 0. Or if I go over here, same thing. From 0 to negative 4, they're all 4 units less than 0. So every answer between negative 4 and 4 will work. Uh, I'm going to put a closed dot and a closed dot uh, because uh, the equal sign, right, they're included there. So if I wanted to write this answer down, like what x values work, I would say x has to be between 4 and negative 4, and it has to be greater than or equal to 4, negative 4, and less than or equal to 4. So that's how you'd write the answer with inequality notation. If you remember interval notation, we use those brackets and parentheses. We would say the answer to this, those would be brackets because they're closed dots. We would say bracket, everything between negative 4 and positive 4, and I'm including positive 4 also, so I put a bracket around there. So whenever you have a less than sign, usually anyway, there are a couple of cases where if you divide by a negative, the signs can get flipped. But in general, uh, it's going to be the answers are going to be between the two between the, the two numbers that you come up with. If it's greater than, let's think about that one for a second. So there's zero. What you're saying is your distance, x can be any number whose distance is great is more than four away from zero. So if I go to one, two, three, four, that means five, six, seven, eight would all work. Four would not because there's no equal sign. So it's all the numbers. That's all the numbers going that way. If I go to negative four, right there, it'd be all the numbers going that way. So when it's greater than, in general, what happens is your answers are going to go out instead of in because you want the numbers, the distance greater than four. The way you'd write this answer is like this, is you would say, just describe them separately. On this first one, you would say x has to be less than negative 4. Or, describe this one over here, that would have to be x is greater than x is greater than 4. If you're writing now with the interval notation, it would look like this. I would say, start from, remember, you start from the left side over here. So on the left side, it goes to negative infinity. Starts at negative infinity and it goes until I get to negative 4. And it's a parenthesis because negative 4 is not part of my answer. Then there is no answer. They don't start again until I get to 4. So at 4 it starts again. And where does it end at? Between 4 and infinity. They go in that direction. And remember, just put a union sign in between. So we've done this before with those compound inequalities. We're just going to kind of combine these together. Okay, so let's talk about how to actually solve these. So if you have an absolute value inequality. It says solve each inequality, graph its solution, write the answer in interval notation. So on this assignment, it's asked us to write it in interval notation. Okay, the way I do this is this. Step number one is you just solve the, you write it as an equation. So take the absolute value of b minus 2 equals 11. I'm just going to solve that equation. So remember how we solve these equations. You get the absolute value by itself. It already is. Write your two different equations, b minus 2 equals 11 b minus 2 equals negative 11. We're going to solve both of those. So I'm going to add the 2 over. So my first answer I get for that equation is b equals 13. On this one, I add the 2 over, and I get b equals negative 9. Those are my two answers. Next, I'm going to take those two and, and plot them on my graph over here. So I'm going to put a point at 13. There is no equal sign. Over here, there is not an equal sign, so I'm going to do an open dot at 13. And then at negative 9, uh, oh, i got to be careful there. Hey, we're going by 4s, right? This is 12. This would actually be 14 there. So 13 would be somewhere in between there. And then go to negative 9. That's negative 8, negative 10, negative 12. So negative 9 would be somewhere in there. Okay, what I have to decide next is it will always either be shaded between the two numbers or on the outside of the two numbers. And I just have to figure out which one it is. Um, if it's greater than, it will usually be on the outside, but a good way to check is to do a test point. So I'm going to plug 0 in and see if it works. 0 is between the two numbers. If I plug 0 in, I get 0 minus 2. 
So the absolute value of negative 2 is greater than 11. Well, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So the question is, is 2 greater than 11? And that's no. 0 doesn't work. That means it has to be shaded on the outside. So we're going to be going that direction. Sorry about that, Bill. So when I write my actual answer, it says write it with interval notation. Those are the brackets and parentheses. So I'm going to put a parenthesis there. Right, open dot is parenthesis. I start from the left side. It starts at negative infinity. So negative infinity, and it goes until I get to right there, which is negative 9. My answers don't start again until I get to 13. And they go to infinity. And we put a union sign in between. There's my, my answer right there. All right, let's do one that's a less than. So I have the absolute value of 10n is less than 40. So the very first step, like we did before, is you always just write it as an equation. Now we're just going to solve that the same way we solved equations on the last uh, assignment we did. You write your two different cases, 10n equals 40 and 10n equals negative 40. So divide by 10. Uh, n is equal to 4. Divide by 10. n is equal to negative 4. Okay, take those two and put them on the number line. This one does not have an equal sign, so I'm going to put an open dot. Open dot at negative 4 and at 4. And now all I have to decide is am I shading between or on the outside. Usually with less than, it's going to be between the two points. But let's just verify that. I'm going to pick a number between which is, I'm going to pick 0 again. If I plug 0 in, 10 times 0 would be 0. Absolute value of 0 is 0. So I get 0 is less than 40. Hey, that's true. So 0 worked. It was in between, so I'm going to shade everywhere in between. The way we write our answer to that, like it wants me to write it with interval notation, is I start from the left side. My answers don't start until I get to negative 4. And they include everything between negative 4 and they end up positive 4. Everything in between there. So that's how I write my answer using interval notation, right? This is a parenthesis, that's a parenthesis. Uh, let's try one that's a little more complicated. I'm going to skip past that one. Uh, let's do this one right here. The absolute value of n plus, minus 6 plus 9 is greater than or equal to 10. So again, I always start out by writing it as an equation. The absolute value of n minus 6 plus 9 equals 10. Now let's go through our solving steps. So first, I'm going to get the absolute value by itself. So I'm going to minus the 9 over. So now I have the absolute value of n minus 6 equals 1. Now I write your two different cases. So I do n minus 6 equals 1, and n minus 6 equals negative 1. Okay, solve those two equations. I'm going to add the 6 over. n equals 7. This one I'm going to add the 6 over. Uh, negative 1 plus 6 is 5. Okay, those are my two solutions I'm going to put on the number line. Okay, be careful. This one has an equal sign. That means it's a closed dot. So I go to 5, put a closed dot, and 7, and put a closed dot. Now, my only question, again, is it between the two numbers or is it on the outside of the two numbers? This is a greater than. Usually that means it's going to be on the outside, but just test a number. So I could put 0. 0 is on the outside, so let's see if it works. If I go the absolute value of Oops, sorry, that wasn't writing. Absolute value of 0 minus 6 plus 9. The question is, is that greater than 10? Well, 0 minus 6 is a negative 6, but the absolute value is a positive 6. 6 plus 9 is 15. So the question is, is 15 greater than 10? Yeah, it is. So 0 worked. 0 was on the outside, so that means I go to the outside. Um, I'm going to replace these with brackets, right? Closed dot means brackets. And now write it with interval notation. So start from the left side. It goes to negative infinity until I get to 5, including 5. So there's a bracket. Then there, the answers start again at 7, and they go to infinity. We put our union sign in between. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. All you're doing, write it with an equal sign. Solve it like we did yesterday to solve the equation. Get the absolute value by itself. Write your two different equations. Get your two answers. Put those two answers on the number line, and then less than will generally be between the two points. Greater than will be on the outside, but you can verify that by plugging in a value into your absolute value, into the inequality, and seeing if it works or, or it doesn't work. Okay.
But that's it. That's solving absolute value equations. Thanks, guys.